Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. We're going to talk about responsive design in this video, and this is an introduction to responsive design. There are other videos where we will take it to the next step, but I want to give you an overview of the concept of building a website that is responsive or mobile friendly. A responsive website means that the web page is going to respond according to the device that it's being viewed on. So if that device is a smartphone, obviously it needs to adjust. If it's a tablet, it needs to adjust. So a responsive web page is a page that responds to the width of the browser that the user is using. So we're looking at a responsive page right here as a demonstration. This is a very simple website purposely so that I can show you how responsiveness works in very simple terms. So you can see this is just a web page with several objects. It's got video, um, some images, some background, some layers, text objects, that kind of thing. We'll be working with this as a demonstration and you'll see how this works better. If we grab the edge of the browser window, which I'm doing right here on the right side of the screen, and I begin to shrink it down, you can see that the website actually adjusted. Let me go back. This is its full width right here. But watch, for example, the three icons or the three images in the center of the screen. As I bring the browser window in and simulate looking at this on a smaller device, like a tablet, you'll see that they adjusted. They went in. You can see that they are doing that. And if we scroll down, if we were to look at this website in a more narrow browser like we are here, which is about the size of a tablet, and we scroll down, everything still fits. Everything adjusted accordingly. In fact, let me go back out and you can see what happened down here. I'm going to widen it down here. And you can see how the objects have adjusted. This is maybe the desktop size, we'll call that, actually called the default, the largest viewport or uh, variation of the page. And then we go down to the tablet size. You can see that the page is making adjustments. And if we go even further, if we go down to the next breakpoint or viewport, you can see it adjusted again because this is how we would want to see it on a smartphone, for example. So let's go back up to the top of the page and you'll see. Here's the smaller variation of the page, maybe a, a smartphone size. Then we'll go up to the tablet size. That's the second variation of the page. And then the third one is the default or the full desktop size. So this particular page has three variations. We also call those breakpoints or a viewport. Because there's so much jargon here, let me break that down. Variation, we call it a variation because it's simply a variation of the same page. All of these objects are still the same object on the same page. What's different about them is that when we look at them in a different variation, even though it's the same object, it's simply in a different location on the page. It might even be a different dimension. We'll talk about that in a second. Sometimes it's called a viewport. That's the technical term. So whether we call this a page variation or a viewport size, it's the same thing. A viewport means the width of your browser. That's all that means. It's just coding language. And then we also call them breakpoints. At what point does the page break into the next variation? So if you begin to hear this language, we're talking about page variation, breakpoints, viewports, all the same thing. So this is a live demo, so to speak, of a responsive web page. Now let's break it down and look at it in 90 Second Website Builder to see how maybe it would have been created. So here's the page in the canvas of 90 Second Website Builder. So just like you would expect, you can see all the objects. What I want you to notice though is we are currently looking at this design, this page, in what's called the default variation, the default breakpoint. That's always the largest variation of the page. And in my case, I set it to 1200. I will show you some suggested sizes, but we'll be working with the default or a desktop size of 1200. And then we have some other variations. So my default size is going to be the actual page width. If you right click on a blank part of the canvas and go to page properties, that's where you set the page width. This page width only applies again to our largest variation what we call default, and that will be what we're gonna also call our desktop size. That's our default size. But there's also another variation or breakpoint, and you can see that it's indicated by this little black arrow. So I also created a variation of this page at 768. I'm gonna click the arrow, and now you can see the 768 version of this same page. This is not a different page. These are not different objects. They're the same objects, but they've been adjusted 
for this variation. They've been moved over and reduced in size to fit within the viewport of 768 pixels. That's what you're looking at here. As you can see when we scroll down, everything has been adjusted to fit this viewport. And again, I've got a smaller one yet at 320, and that's what that looks like. Again, the same objects, just in different locations. So all of these objects are being shared across one page, but three different ways of looking at them. Let me show you just some of the mechanics here first. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page and show you a shortcut. Here's a quick way to bounce between the variations. If I click default, we'll go back to that 1200. If I click this, we would go to the tablet size, and here we're already on the 320. So that's what these are. So as we add breakpoints, they will line up here. This is how we add breakpoints. We could click on this, and we could select a breakpoint. Here are some suggestions. These are common viewport sizes. You don't have to use these. You can type in your own, but you're going to probably most of the time want to stick to these sizes. Also, this button down here is how to manage the breakpoints we've already created. You can see that I have a 768 and a 320. It's not going to show me my 1200 because that's the default size. That's the regular normal web page size. But here I can manage these. What we've done now is we've just looked at the three variations of this page. Let me explain to you how the site was built. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start with a blank page and show you what I would have done to create this website. When I started, I didn't have any breakpoints. I just had a blank page like this, nothing on it, no variations, only the default, which I set to 1200. Again, if we go to the page properties, I set that here. So now we have a 1200 pixel wide page with nothing on it. You don't have to do it this way, but I, I recommend doing this because I think this is the fastest, easiest kind of workflow. When I build a responsive page, I build the default page first completely. I don't add any of the variations or any of the breakpoints until I've at least built out my default page completely. And that's what I'm going to show you here. By the magic of video, I'm going to do some editing so that you don't have to wait through everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an object on this page, and this will be my header object. So let me go get the header. Okay, so what I did was I got the layer tool from the toolbox. I drew a layer, and in this layer, I gave it a background image style, and here's the background image. Okay, so you should probably understand that already. So in other words, I've simply made a layer this size with the background image. That's all I've done. However, you will notice that this layer is exactly 1200 pixels wide. That's very important. Here's why. If we double click on this layer, one of the things that I did when I set it up is I checked off relative horizontal sizing. I also like to center the content, so I choose that one as well. Relative horizontal sizing means that this layer is going to be infinite. No matter how wide the browser goes, it's going to uh, fill the screen all the way across. That just looks better. It eliminates any white space on either edge of the page. And it's just a design option. It's the way I like my web pages to look. Let's build out the rest of the page. So I'm going to add some text here. Okay, so now what I've done is I went and got the text tool and I added some text. I got the jQuery button tool and I put a button here. I'm just going to link this to another page of my website. And this is what's called a text menu. So I went to the navigation tools in the toolbox and I brought over a text menu and a design this. Nothing really spectacular here happening. I just put some objects in my layer. So these are all part of the same object. Now I'm going to go down and build out the rest of the page. So what I've done now is I've added a bunch of stuff to the web page. Again, this is the key point. I've still only created one page variation. There are no breakpoints. This page is not responsive yet. We've simply built a 1200 pixel website. On it, I have a layer for my header. I created another layer right here. And I also made it 1200 pixels wide. And I put a piece of text right here. These are just images that I found on my computer and put them there. I aligned them with the alignment, the arrange align tool up there. Put some dummy text here for now that I'll fill in later. I also created a layer with a solid color background. And I put an image right here that I found on my computer. Some text. Here's a text object right here as well as one right here. And then I made another layer down here. And I put some text. I grabbed a YouTube video, I want that to show here, and some images that will link to my social media networks. And then uh, at the very bottom, another layer. Uh, this one also exactly 1200 pixels. All these layers are exactly 1200 pixels wide, so they fit into the page just right with some text in a solid color. Also, every one of these layers, let me double click on this one, every one of these layers I chose relative horizontal sizing. I think that just looks better, and that's why they all line up the way they do on the edge of the page, 
pull this up here so you can see they're all at 1200 pixels wide. Okay, so now that I have created a basic web page, it's time to take the next step and make this page become responsive. Here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go down to my responsive tools down here. And by the way, there's a couple of different ways to do this. We can go down to the bottom like I showed you before, and we can just click here to add the breakpoints. That's not the only way to get to the responsive tools though. You also have access to them in the uh, top menu. I'm moving the camera as quickly as I can so you can see. You can also go up here to page. It's under the page menu because responsiveness is about the page, not the website. So each page you make can be responsive or not. Under the page menu, we can go up here and add breakpoints or manage our breakpoints, etc. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a breakpoint to this page. We got our 1200, now let's add one. And let's add a 768 breakpoint. We're gonna click OK. And now you can see we have a 768 breakpoint. In fact, we're actually working in it right now. There's two ways I know that. One, if we look at the tab, it shows that we're working in the 768 variation of this page. And if you look at the ruler, you can see the ruler now ends here. This content goes well beyond the breakpoint. That's okay, because it's really easy to adjust, and this is where our work comes in. All we've done is we've created a breakpoint now that shares, this variation shares all of these objects. I'm gonna toggle back to the 1200. I can do that by going down to the uh, menu below, and if I click default, we'll go back to the 1200, or I can just toggle this way. I'm gonna go back up to the top. If I just click on this, it toggles us back to the 1200. Now it's hard for you to see that we're bouncing between the two because they're exactly the same right now. So in other words, if I click here, we're now in the 768. If I toggle it again, now we're in the 1200. So it's a little bit hard to see. Let me move the camera so you can see that again. So right now we're in the 1200. I click this and now we're in the 768. So now that we're in the 768, it's time for us to make this be a 768 pixel web page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start moving my objects. So for example, I'm gonna move this text object in here. I wanna make sure I'm working within the 768 variation. I'm gonna bring this in like this, and I'm gonna stop at 768. If you're using snapping, that makes it a little easier. If you're not, you can go down to the properties menu and just type in the exact width of this layer if you want. So now that's 768. Now let's watch what happens. I've just moved you know, one thing, one layer, and if we toggle back to the 1200, this is what the 1200 variation looks like so far. And this is what the 768 variation looks like so far. So now let's scroll down and do that with another one. Now I've got this layer to deal with. I want all this to fit within this 768 pixel area. So I need to move everything over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these objects and simply move them. So if I move this in here, maybe kind of center it. Remember the center of the page is based on the ruler. Since this is 768, the center is somewhere around, you know, 375 or whatever that would be, whatever half of 768 is. So my center is going to be right in here. Now these are way too big to fit in here. So I want to move these in. So I'm going to scoot everything over like this and like this. And so I will keep doing that. And again, I'm gonna use the magic of uh, video editing to switch these around here for you, hold on. What I've done is I've just scooched everything over, literally dra dragging it around. Now I can do this more uh, precisely if I use the Arrange tool or if I use the Properties Inspector and get all these in just the right pixel area. But just for the sake of this video, the idea is I'm scrunching everything over. I need to still move this layer all the way over so we get to the 768. There we go. And let's put that right at exactly 768, and that's where that goes. And I can maybe move these around a little bit more. So what I've done is I've just basically moved things into the 768 variation. I would continue to do this down the page and get everything moved over. And then once we do, we would have a page that looks like this. So here's a page that has everything moved over into the 768. So basically I just moved things over. When I got down here, I decided instead of having these buttons next to each other, I put them on top of each other. I put the Facebook on top of the YouTube because it fits better. Because I can change the location of this object in this variation without disturbing the 1200 variation. So to create the 320, we're going to go ahead and go up to page. And we're going to add a breakpoint called 320. And now we've got another page variation here. And again, we're going to need to scrunch everything over and move it all into the 320 pixel area. So I'm going to do that. That means I'm going to grab these kinds of things and move everything over into place. 
I'm going to shrink this down to a 320. Oh, and by the way, you'll notice I tried to shrink this down to 320 and it stopped me. I can't go any farther. The reason is because this object is actually really big. It doesn't need to stick out here. This text object, I can bring this in here like this. That's what it was bumping up against. Sometimes that'll happen. Now I've got another one and it's this one. So let's bring that in so that I can bring this in. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to be bringing in all of these objects so that they fit within the breakpoint. Now again, this is an overview, so I'm not covering every possible detail of responsive design. I'm just giving you the concept of how this works. In the next responsive set of videos, you'll see some of the details of how we go about doing this more specifically and some of the really good tricks tips and techniques that you can use to make your site responsive. Once we get everything moved over into the 320 variation, our site would then look like this. We'd have a 320 with everything moved over into place. And we would have a 768 with everything moved over into place. And we would have a default size of 1200 with everything in place. Now, all of these objects, again, are shared across these viewports or these variations. So in other words, this right here is a single object. And in this variation, it shows right here. But in this variation, the 768, it's been moved to over here, even though it's the same object. And in this one, it's been moved here into this location, even though it's the same object. And some objects I've changed the size of. So in the 320, this image is only this big. But in the 768, this very same image is in a different location, slightly bigger, and in the default size, a different location and much bigger. And yet it's the same image because you can share these objects across page variations without disturbing them. You can change their size, their dimension, you can change their location and not affect the other variation. So that's enough for the overview. That gives you the basic concept. There are some other things you're gonna to wanna to learn how to do as you're working with responsive design. Let me touch on them and then we'll go into detail in other videos. The first one is you're gonna to wanna to learn how to use the object manager. Now let me move my camera down because I keep my object manager down here. This is a, another palette you can open up if you go up to the view menu. Up here, you can decide how these show. I've got my object manager checked so that I can see it and work with it. An object manager shows all of the objects that are on my page. This will be important as we move further into responsive design because there comes a time when you need to hide certain objects in variations and show certain objects. So in other words, let's say I didn't want this video to show except on the default and the tablet. Let's say I don't want this video to play on the uh, mobile size, the 320. Well, I can do that. When I go to my 320 variation where this video is, I can hide it. And there comes a time when you may want to hide some objects and only show them in certain variations. So that's where the object manager comes into play. If I wanted to hide that video, I'd simply uncheck it and it would not show in this particular variation. So this is an overview. Just remember what we've learned from this is you're creating one page and usually start with your default, your largest size, build it out completely. And then as you add your breakpoints, just shift your objects into place, maybe change their dimension, and you'll be creating your site to be responsive. So I'll see you in the other responsive design videos so you can learn how to make your sites mobile friendly and responsive so that they can look great in any browser and on any device as you're building your responsive websites in 90 Second Website Builder.